Hey everybody, this is Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. So today I wanted to go over the if statement. We're going to start actually doing some more serious stuff with the corn shell programming. Now up till this point, when we've run a program, it's started at the top line, and it's run every single command all the way down to the bottom to the end line. Now what we want to do today is introduce conditional statements which say well we're gonna start at the top and then we're gonna hit something and if a certain condition is true we'll execute some lines otherwise we'll skip over them so for example this program will ask the person if they're 18 or over and if they are we're going to remind them to vote so let's get started as always first line, first column, pound, exclamation point, slash bin, slash KSH. Then we tell the name of the program and a little bit about the program. This program introduces the if statement and a little bit about yourself. Okay, so we're going to ask the person to enter their age and we do that with the print statement and we use the dash N because that will not print a carriage return at the end of the print statement which the print statement normally does then we just say enter your age and we read in the person's age and put it in a variable called age okay so here is the format of the if statement we say if then we run a test and if the test is true we do everything between the word then and the word phi however if the test comes out not to be true, then we skip over everything between the word then and the word phi. Okay, so important thing I want you to remember here is really just the format and the structure. You have an if, you'll have a test condition, which we'll go over in a minute. Then you have the word then, that's the beginning of the block that gets executed if the test is true all the way down to the phi and that's how you end an if statement it's if backwards and you can have multiple commands in between the if and the phi I just put in one in this case the other thing I want to point out is that you want to have the then statement to be the very next command after the if statement so you would not want to do something like this you don't want to put a comment in between the if and the, the then. Most versions of corn shell don't like that. The version of corn shell that I have lets you get away with it, but I don't suggest you do it. So let's look at the testing. Now as you remember, may remember from last session, the double parentheses mean we're doing math. Okay, so inside of the double parentheses, not only can we do math as an x equals y plus 1 but we can also do mathematical comparisons and in this case we're doing age is greater than or equal to 18. Two things I want, want to point out here. One is we're comparing a variable age with a number but you could also compare a variable with another variable so you could have a variable here or excuse me and the other thing I want to point out is if you do have a number in the comparison the number has to go on the right hand side in other words you can't say if 18 is less than or equal to age you have to have the number over here on the right hand side and the variable on the left so if the user enters an age of 5 then what's going to happen is this test will come out false because the age is definitely less than 18 so the program will skip over all these statements between the then and the phi however if the person's age is 18 or more so if the person enters 18 then the commands in between the then and the phi will get executed in this case it's just one command okay we'll run this in a moment but I want to show you the mathematical test that you can in fact run okay you can compare once like again once I said you can do variable to variable or variable to, to a number in this this case I'm just using variable to variable 
you can do e equality test. Now notice it's a double equal sign, not a single equal sign, because inside of the double parentheses, a single equal sign means assignment. So if you say x equals y, then you're actually assigning the value of y to x. Or in this case, if it was a single equal sign, you would be assigning num2 to num1. So to test num1 against num2 for equality, use a double equal sign. This right here is a not equal test, so this will be true if num1 is not the same value as num2. This is a at num1 less than num2. This is num1 greater than num2. This is num1 less than or equal to num2. This is num1 greater than or equal to num2. These last four are very self-explanatory. It's the first two that I want to make sure I went over. Once again, in order to do a comparison test, you have to use a double equal sign, not a single equal sign. And if you want to check to see if two numbers are not equal, use not equal. Okay, let's make this program executable. Once again, change mod u plus x program name, and let's run it with the dot slash. Okay, enter your age. Nothing happens because the if statement, the print statement was inside of the the print vote statement was inside of the if statement and we didn't we weren't over 18. Let's run this again. Let's do 18. Remind you to vote. Let's do 52. Remind you to vote. There are a few more videos on the if statement. I hope you get a chance to watch them too.